Coming up, we've got some great new accessories for the iPhone 5, a lens and a keyboard. The newest Chromebook is here. This time it's from Toshiba. And Asus has a sub $700 touchscreen laptop for Windows 8 lovers. It's time to watch Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Scott Evest, technology enabled clothing to carry all your gadgets and more. Visit scottevest.com slash twit now through February 24th to save 40% off all 14 of their best sellers. That's scottevest.com slash twit and use the code twit13 at checkout. Welcome to Before You Buy. This is the Twit Product Review Show where we get all the latest and greatest products, things you've been hearing about, into our studio, parcel them out amongst our staff, give them a chance to spend some time with it, get a real-world feel for what a real person thinks of these products. We're kick things off with our producer, Shannon Morse. Uh, you know, I've played with the Olo Clip lenses since the iPhone 4S. These are little clip-on lenses that give your iPhone camera all sorts of new capabilities. There's a new set out for the iPhone 5S. Shannon Morse has this look. Hey everybody, my name is Shannon Morse and I'm the producer of Before You Buy. Woo! Today I'm checking out the new Olo Clip lenses and accessories for the iPhone 5, 5S and iPod Touch, newest generation. So, Tony had previously reviewed the original Olo Clip and he gave it a buy. Today I'm going to determine if the new Olo Clip accessories and lenses still stand up to the same name. So first off is the quick flip case. This goes on your iPhone 5 or 5S or your iPod Touch and it is $50 straight up. It's very plasticky. It does not protect your case, your iPhone very well, but it is perfect for taking pictures with the Oloclip lenses. You can also use it without an Oloclip lens by just flipping over the case and using this as a brand new shutter button. Oh, it makes it so much easier and steadier than having to press the button on your phone every single time you want to take a picture. So, pretty cool. Second off, I checked out the three-in-one macro lens. So this one is $70 and it gives you three different macro lenses that you can use on the same little kit. Uh, one of them screws off and it gives you seven times macro, 14 times, and 21 times. The Biggest flaw I found with this one is that you really honestly have to have a tripod if you want to use this and not have blurry pictures every time you get close to something, especially if it's your cat and they're moving around and you want to get pretty cute little pictures of their whiskers. Very, very hard to do. The third one I was checking out is the 4-in-1 photo lens, also for iPhone 5, 5S, and iPod Touch newest generations. This one also costs $70, and it includes a fisheye, wide-angle lens, a 15x macro, and a 10x macro. I found this one to be much easier to use, especially if I wanted to take pictures just handheld of my cats or my ring, or whatever I have in my household. It was much easier to use, it was very simple. I was able to just unscrew the lenses, and that's quite simple to use as well, and take pictures with all four of the different lenses that are included in this kit. Uh, the picture quality came out just like you would expect from an iPhone, and fisheye and wide-angle lens pictures looked really, really cool, and quite stunning and vibrant and very clear. So I was very happy with the, the quality of this lens. The third one that I checked out, well, the fourth product, third lens, is the Telephoto and Circular Polarizing Lens. So this one costs a little bit extra, and it just has two lenses. It's $100 for this one. It's the brand new, big spanking new Olo Clip lens. Uh, it includes the telephoto on one side and the polarizing on the other. So the thing with this one is if you're outside and you want to take pictures and not have too much glare or you want to get some really stunning, vibrant pictures of the sky, you just tilt and turn the polarizing effect to the point that you are happy. 
you can definitely see a really big difference with the quality of the color of the sky and things like that whenever you're turning the polarizing lens from right to left. The telephoto lens is really cool as well. This one gives you two times the zoom that your iPhone can usually get. So if you're at a zoo and you're looking at really, really big cats, you can get really close pictures of them and they are still very clear and very crisp and beautiful. I had a lot of fun playing with each of these. They all include extra accessories if you want them, like a little bag, which can also be doubled as a cleaning kit for your lenses. Very useful, as well as cute little lens caps and an adapter for your iPod Touch. So let's go ahead and move on to my pros and cons. Since each of these are all Eclipse lenses and all of them work and fit the same way on the iPhone, I decided to go ahead and include all my pros and cons into one list. So first off, the pros. Each of these have excellent quality. The design is very nice. Included in that design is a very snug fit. So whenever you're using your phone and you're out in the wilderness taking pictures of your friends hiking or whatever, you're not going to have to worry about your lens falling off, especially since it's very pricey. And third, it's a compact size, so you can just throw it in your pocket, take it out whenever you need to. Very cool. Now on the con side, of course, the screen protector, since it is a very snug fit, will tend to get damaged or come off on the edge of your camera whenever you're trying to put on the all eclipse lens. It's because it's such a snug fit. So yes, that is a con because you won't be able to protect your entire screen whenever you're using one of these. Uh, and if you can get it on there, good on you. And second, they are very expensive. Each of them are over $50 uh, if you want to purchase them online, and they're not that much cheaper on Amazon. So it's definitely an expense if you want to get into this kind of criteria. So would I give these a buy, try, or don't buy? Well, these are definitely for the obsessive photographers. These are for the guys that are going to go out and take pictures on Instagram like all day. The people that have thousands of followers on Instagram. So I would give these a buy, especially if you are a big time photographer and you have an iPhone and you plan to keep your iPhone for a long time. If you don't intend to keep your iPhone or if you plan to upgrade or change over to an Android phone, might not be the product for you, obviously. So again, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is the new All Eclip accessory line for the iPhone 5, 5S, and the iPod Touch. And I'll see you guys back in the studio. Bye. The All Eclipse, a definite, a definite buy. I have sets for all the old iPhones, one after the other. Now I have to get the the new ones uh, too. But I just, I just love it. If you do a lot of uh, Instagramming or iPhoning, it's a wonder. You know, camera uh, stuff. It's a wonderful thing to have. Tony Wang is here, our editor in chief. This is uh, exciting, Tony. The uh, a new Chromebook. Yes. They all kind of are somewhat similar. All sub three hundred dollars. Yes. They run Google's Chrome OS. They're yep. simple, inexpensive computers. This is Toshiba. What's different about this one? Well, so this one's a little bit different, but the biggest difference is 13.3 inches. Big screen. Big screen, a little bit bigger than the rest of them, like the Acer that we reviewed on uh, episode 106 with uh, Radford. Um, but I did go through the specs, and um, they're pretty much all the same right now. Mm -hmm. um, you're all running Celeron. I didn't know Celeron was still around. Yeah, Intel brought it back. <laughs> right, it's a 1.4 gig. <laughs> a name that no one loved in the first place, they brought <laughs> right. it back. It's like it was... Salary, nobody likes Salary. Exactly. Um, two gigs of RAM. <laughs> two gigs. Uh, display... that's, that's good. That's more than, you, than typical, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it's definitely, uh, I mean, if you look back on laptops from a few years ago, this is sort of like... A, it's a netbook. Um, netbook, kind of. exactly. A yeah. netbook running uh, Chrome OS. Uh, it's my first time using one, so I had no idea what, um, what to, to expect. expect. <laughs> Other than people say, oh, it's not that great, but um, I actually really enjoyed it. So the Pawn Stars in this Microsoft ad said, well, when you're not connected to the internet, and you can't run Microsoft Office to it, and you're not connected to the internet, you can't do anything. Is that legitimate uh, criticism? Yes. Um, I mean, it's true. It, it's, it is true, but it's sort of like the uh, the Xbox One argument where when are you not going to be connected to right. the Internet? We're right. all connected to the Internet, right? Even on an airplane a lot of times. Right, exactly. So. If I'm home, I'm connected to the Internet right. three different ways. So, so were you able to live with Chrome OS and, and get stuff done? Well, because what we do here, we use Google Apps, so it was really easy for transitioning. Um, I sign into my accounts. You can have multiple accounts. So this is sort of... Um, I was thinking about, uh, I know people want to have like a home iPad where everybody has access to it, but you have your own account. This is sort of like the home PC where 
um, or the home laptop where you can have multiple Google accounts signed right. in. And it's really easy to use. Uh, I love the keyboard. It looks like an, a, a MacBook keyboard. It, that and it functions style. just like a MacBook yeah. keyboard yeah. as well. And um, that, so that's one of the pros is the keyboard and also the price. The 299, it's sort of middle top range Chromebook. It's about 50 bucks more than the other guys, but that's because it has a bigger screen. Right? Exactly, and with yeah. the bigger screen, it has bigger battery, so it does get the advertised nine hour battery. Nine hours? Nine hours. That is good. With the display on you know, medium brightness. That's really great. Now, it's not a touch screen, right? No. Okay. No. That, that will you have to go for the Pixel. The Pixel, <laughs> which is 1200 bucks or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, the con, obviously, um, it's not a full OS, but um, you don't. The display is also sort of a con. It's rated for 720p, so it's 1366 by 768. Yeah, 768. Yeah. Exactly. It's not the super high res screen. You'd exactly. Like, it's not. It's not the yeah. Pixel screen. But at that price. Right. This is aimed at students at a businesses where the employee doesn't need a whole lot of functionality. Something like ours, where Google Apps right, would right. work. Um, do you think it would work in that those kinds of environments? Definitely. Um, I know it only has like 16 gigabytes of local storage, but uh, it, you get free 100 gigabyte Google Drive storage right. for two years. And I was worried about that, but I actually found out that if you put anything in there in the two years, you actually get to keep them. You just can't modify the 100 gigabyte. So after after, after two years, exactly, you still have. So those fill data it up there. now. <laughs> exactly. So you know, if you want some, you, you can back it up. You know, it's right. 100 gigabytes. Uh, you know, there's some other advantages to the Chrome OS. I mean, this isn't really a review of the Chrome OS. We've talked a lot about it, right. but security is great. So you don't have to worry if you if you know anything goes wrong, you can power wash. It gets right back to the starting point. And because you're logging into your Google account, it'll know everything immediately as soon as you log in. All yeah. of those, I think, are good selling points exactly. for basic um, users. That actually brings up one point that I was having issues with was um, to log into the laptop using your Google password. I know a lot of us use LastPass and OnePass. I don't know how that would work with that. Um, personally, I just have a very, very long password. Me too, and so it is that, kind of a con. I have to right, enter my right. Google every password every single exactly. time. It's a little frustrating. Um, there was uh, something I found that was interesting was there was a warning sticker on the bottom of the laptop mm -hmm. saying that it might get really, really hot during yeah. use because there's no fan built into right. this. Um, I actually tried to stress it, and um, I was not able to get it to heat up at all, not like a MacBook Pro. You don't hear the fan because no, there is no fan, no fan and yeah. you don't feel the heat because uh, it, it just, doesn't get that hot. I, it's a cellar. Is it a metal case? It looks uh, nice. It's, yeah, it's completely plastic. It just looks like metal. Yeah, all it's right. very solid. Um, you get a little bit of play in the touchpad. How, how is the touchpad? That's another thing. A lot of Chromebooks it, don't have great you know, touchpads. I, I'm a person of touching. Like I don't like the clicking yes. on the touchpad, so it worked really well for me. Um, it's as responsible as a Mac, MacBook Pro. So, so we kind of covered the pros and cons. The next question: Buy, try, don't buy. It's a buy for me. A buy, two hundred ninety-nine dollars for the Toshiba Chromebook. Just came out and uh, lightweight, portable. It's mm -hmm. Chrome OS. I mean, it's you know, three, that's what you're comparing yeah, against pounds, other Chrome so OS. Yeah, not, not too bad. And I like the battery life. That's yeah. that's I think better than anybody on the Chrome yeah. OS, as far as I can tell. Nine hours. That's great. Thank you, Tony. Tony Wang, he's the touch kind of person. We now know this about him. <laughs> he's also our, <laughs> our editor-in-chief here at the Twit Network. Do you wear, uh, you wear Scotty Vest stuff, don't you? I do. Do you like it? Yes. Don't I love it? I wear it all the time. Uh, Scott uh, Jordan, who started Scotty Vest, wanted to make clothing for geeks like us mm. with pockets. What do they have on the website? They say how many, uh, how many pockets sold. It's in the tens of millions of pockets sold. And uh, I, I have to say... Their stuff is getting better and better and better. This is a nice one. This is a, I actually have several of these. I have one in navy. This is the polo shirt. They call it bamboo because, uh, well, it, well, feel that. What do you think? Is that cotton? It feels I already like, kind of gave it away. Yeah. It feels like cotton, but yeah. it isn't. Huh. Uh, this is a synthetic based on bamboo, apparently, really? that wears well. Uh, it's very comfortable. It wicks beautifully. It looks like a great polo shirt, but look, like all the Scotty Vest clothing, it's got hidden pockets. In fact, sometimes on this clothing, they actually have to put stuff in the pockets so you'll find them. This one is right up here by the, by the button. Uh, you could put a phone in there. There's a side pocket as well. The nice thing about Scotty Vest is you can walk around 
and no one will know where your stuff is. They have a anti pickpocket protection guarantee. They'll pay you a thousand bucks if your pocket gets picked wearing Scotty vest clothing. I wear it when I travel all the time. The vests are great for photographers, right? You're a photographer. Yeah. Um, you could put all your stuff in there. A million pockets. Um, some of these jackets, 144 total pockets in one of these wow. jackets. <laughs> There's pockets in the pockets. The x-ray feature shows you where everything is. Pockets for your phone, your glasses. The patented personal area network allows you to run wires through the jacket for your headphones or a battery charger. There's even pockets big enough for an iPad. The special clear pockets designed for your touch devices so they can still be protected inside the jacket, but you can still control them. I just love Scotty Vest stuff. I've been wearing Scotty Vest for life for men and women. It's great. Now, I want you to go to scottyvest.com slash twit why don't you do that brian because scottyvesh.com slash twit you'll see 14 products to celebrate their 13th anniversary sale those 14 best-selling items are off 40 percent off right now when you use the offer code twit 13 40 percent off stuff for men and women i love that trench coat lisa got one of those they're just gorgeous scotty vest also has those puffy jackets what do they call them the puffer jackets great for the cold weather if you're back east you know you need something like that. Uh, the Molly jacket for the ladies, uh, women's trench coats, the fleece 7.0, which I wear every single day. The fleece is light, but it's warm. And of course, all those pockets. Uh, Lisa loves her Lucy cardigan. It's good looking, but it has pockets everywhere. It's not clothing that's not designed. It's engineered, not just designed. So 40% off, 14 of their best-selling items now through February 24th. Uh, you have till 9 p.m. Mountain Time, February 24th, 2014, to take advantage of this offer. Make sure you use our code TWIT13. And you want to see what items are on sale, visit scottyvest, S-C-O-T-T-E-V-E-S-T dot com slash TWIT. And you know, if you're watching this after the uh, sale date ends, uh, after the 24th, try the code anyway. <laughs> Scott's known for like just like crazy stuff. Where he'll just kind of, oh, yeah, sure. I'll give you that. ScottyVest.com slash twit. Use the code twit13 at checkout. Hi, Scott Jordan. We love you. And we love our Scott E vests. I should give you some stuff, Tony. We got a big shipment. You have a lot. You have it all, right? I have the bundled up shirt. Isn't that nice? I wear, I have all of those. The check ones? Yeah. yeah. Check one. Those are one. really good. <laughs> I wear those when I'm off. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm wearing Scotty Vest underwear. It's got pockets. I won't tell you where. <laughs> ScottyVest.com slash twit. You'll, you'll love it. Try it today. All right, moving on. Before you buy is on the air, let's see. Next, it's time for some headphones. We decided to give Brian's brother, Greg, uh, the Urban Ears, the Kinevo, and the Griffin Wood Tunes. Let's take a look. A headphone rundown with Greg Burnett. Greg? Hi, I'm Greg Burnett with Twit.tv, and before you buy, and I am doing a headphone roundup. That means I have three moderately priced headphones to review for you guys. The Zinkin uh, DJ headphones by Urban Ears, the Kinevo BTH240 Bluetooth headset, and the Griffin Wood Tones. The Wood Tones are a good pair of headphones. They sound good, they're comfortable, which are, you know, your two top priorities when it comes to headphones but they're about sixty dollars and I think that's mainly a bit pricey mainly because of the fact that they're made out of wood a very good average set of headphones just doesn't bring anything particularly good to the table other than the fact that they're wood uh, up next is the Kinevo BTH240 Bluetooth headset now these Headphones are pretty cool because they're Bluetooth wireless. Um, they have 10 hour battery life and they're pretty mini. They fold up and come with a little velvet pouch that you can pop them into. Perfect for uh, bringing them with you to the gym, going for a run. They're only $30 and so as you can imagine the sound quality on these is not spectacular. Uh, saving the best for last, we have the Urban Ears Zinken. Uh, DJ headphones. So why are they DJ headphones? Well, they have a matte finish and um, kind of a strange rubbery material on the uh, ear cushions. Also, it has another port so someone else can plug into your headphones and listen to what you're listening to. 
Moving on to the pros and cons for all three headphones. Um, the Griffin Wood Tones, again, comfortable, cool looking. Cons though, expensive and doesn't really do anything particularly awesome. The Kinevo Bluetooth headset, uh, portable and cheap. Cons, not amazing sound quality and not super comfortable either. Finally, moving on to the Urban Ears Zinken. Well designed, uh, they give you everything you need as a DJ for under $100. Um, cons, they are kind of small, especially for someone with a big head like me. I'm giving the uh, Zinken headphones um, a buy, the Wood Tones a don't buy, and the Kinevo Bluetooth headset a don't buy. I'm Greg Burnett with Twit.tv, and before you buy, thank you and see you next time. We call him Grog around mm. the studio, Greg Burnett. And, we, and he's a headphone fanatic. Thank you, Greg. Our last review comes from our uh, chief of engine. Actually, it's our second to last, our penultimate review. Steve Gibson's coming up in a second. But our chief of engineering, Radford Castro, is here. We give him a lot of the kind of enterprise-grade notebooks. Mm -hmm. This is a new Windows 8 notebook, Asus Vivo book, the V451L. The yes. Vivo books are kind of Asus's least, less expensive yes. stuff, right? Yeah, it kind of sits there with those who are just wanting to use the laptop. Right. But this one has touch this time around. And they're trying to reach that particular market that where they just want to mess around with the laptop, do a couple of things. And it does, for the most part, does a couple of those things. Yeah. But it comes short on some, on some stuff too. Well, tell us all about it. Let so, me see. is this metal? Yes, it is. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. And just right off the bat, I mean, you could tell just looking at the laptop, it's pretty thick. Looks like a MacBook Air, but a little yes. thicker, right? A little bit thicker. Well, yeah. and heavier. Yeah. This is 4.7 pounds. Ooh, yes. that is heavy. Yes. No SSD. It's a regular hard drive at 500 gigabytes. Okay. Looking at about 6 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and a 1080p webcam. But the funny thing is, it's not a 1080p display. It's actually 1366 by 768. That's so, where they always cut corners. Yeah, they always it? cut corners there, and they also cut corners in the processor as well. It's an i5. Okay. 4200. Now, come on, an i5 is fine. Yeah, it's okay. For but, most people. I mean, you don't need more than that, right? Yeah, but the thing is, even for an i5, you would expect a little bit more battery life, which this does not do. Is this fourth generation Haswell? Yeah. Yes, Maybe it that, is. It, it is. is. Okay. But it's the hard drive that's really killing it yeah. in terms of the battery life. Right. So, uh, but everything else, you know, you're looking at. Um, you know, some of the stuff that you would normally see on a regular laptop, like your DVD drives and stuff like that. Brian, if you could show them a little bit of the screenshots or at least some of the gallery on the sides. I do like touch for, uh, for oh, look, you've done all the benchmarks. Yes. Holy so, cow. Yeah. So this is actually Geekbench, 3D Mark, Passmark. And in these benchmarks, this is mostly at the CPU level because the, the, the graphics are, are actually not really that important right. at this level. So but um, that's kind of what you're getting at. It's Summarize a really huge for me, gap. What, what is it? So looking at this right now, I mean, it's a huge gap between an i7 and an i5 for okay. this particular model. But the thing, that, again, that holds it back is the hard drive. Right. So, and the other thing too that really makes this st stand out too is the fact that you're running at a lower resolution. Um, you would expect a little bit more performance, um, but here's the thing that also is not so great. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit on display here. This display looks a little washed out. Maybe that's Yeah, it looks the a little angle. bit washed out. Know. Maybe it might be the angle. Um, again, we're looking at 1366 by 768. Yeah. But here's a typical game that we usually play on most Windows Pro Despicable type of... Despicable Me Despicable Minion Rush. Minion Rush. Kids and adults play it all the time. Yeah. And it's free. But if you look closely, it says, sorry, this app cannot be installed. Your PC might not be meet the minimum requirements. So for some crazy reason, even for an i5, this doesn't run it. That's disappointing. Yeah, yeah. that's very disappointing. So um, aside from those things, I mean, you're looking at a, a laptop that can do, of course, the normal stuff you would expect to do. I mean, you can see, I mean, it does all the normal stuff you'd expect to see. I mean, it's pretty snappy. I mean, but this is something that is, that's expected of all Windows 8 type of, you know, machines. But the thing that kind of uh, sticks out right now is the fact that the price is at $699. It sounds like a good deal, but then, you know, when you compare it to other alternatives, there's just better ones out there. So for that price, in the $700 price range, there are better choices. Yes. Let's get the pros and cons on the V54. So the pros is that you have good anemones. I mean, it has a it has a drive. It has a number of ports in it. It has a two in one card reader. You know, three. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and it has you know the, I don't know what the super multi DVD is. I would assume it runs all the different type of DVDs plus minus. So there's a spinning like optical drive in yes, there. Yes, there is. Oh, yeah. all right. So I mean, so if you attribute the the drive and the hard drive. No wonder. Yeah. Then yeah. you're looking at less battery life, obviously. Right. Um, it has an Ethernet port, so that's kind of a cool plus. 
Um, but then and HDMI and HDMI. full size. Yeah, which I and it has pretty armor. I mean, you're looking at something that is is pretty nice on the outside. This is this is metal also. Yeah, so it's metal. It's aluminum. Brushed you know aluminum. what? It looks pretty high quality. Yeah. I gotta say, Asus is very good at, yeah. at doing something like that. When it that. comes to like uh, appearance, they're always good at that sort of thing. The sacrifice is the screen resolution. The screen resolution. Uh, because it's got a spinning drive. The battery life. Battery life's not mm -hmm. great. Yeah. And uh, and performance is kind of only mediocre. Yeah, it's for very the mediocre, i5. right? So those are the negatives. The pros, yeah. I guess, the price is right. Right. The price is okay, but compared to what we're seeing out there yeah. right now, it's just. It doesn't stand. It doesn't stand well against them. Well, I get a sense of where you're going with this. Is it a try, buy, don't buy? Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this a don't buy, simply because of its price and the fact that you're getting weak performance per dollar. You should get more for what you're paying. Yes. That's Radford Castro, our engineering director, at uh, Twit and the uh, Asus Vivo Tab. What was it? Four fifty-one. Four fifty-one. All right. Thank you. Uh, great to have you once mm. again, Radford. So. There was this... Actually, I gave mine away already. <laughs> you know Ryan Seacrest? Right. The host of American Idol and America's Top 40 and the mm -hmm. host of everything, basically. Uh, you know, does that New Year's Eve thing. Who would ever do a New Year's Eve show? That's crazy talk. Yeah. So uh, Ryan li likes his iPhone 5, his 5S, but he misses his BlackBerry keyboard, so he somehow convinced a company to make a keyboard... <laughs> It's called the typo. Now, I know one person and one person only who loves the physical keyboard so much so that he he's barely given up his BlackBerry. His name is... Oh, here it is. His name is Steve Gibson. There's the typo. I gave it away, but you, you, you gave it back already? No, no, no. We'll give it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, we talked to Steve Gibson earlier today about his experience with Ryan Sequest's typo. That guy here, Steve Gibson, he is, as you know the host of Security Now on the Twit Network, and he is also a keyboard aficionado. Steve, <laughs> Steve joins us right now to give a review of the Typo. It's for the 5 and the 5S, and it's actually a, uh, a case that includes a physical keyboard for the iPhone. You slide your iPhone in there, the keyboard lights up, you can type. Now, Steve, uh, Andy Anako pointed out that Typo is probably not the best name. <laughs> For a keyboard, but we'll give him a pass on that one. What do you yeah. think of it? Um, okay, so I don't want to oversell it because there's absolutely trade-offs associated with it. I would say if you hate typing on a touchscreen as much as I do, then it's probably worthwhile. I think that based on the timing of its... Um, Availability and the announcement relative to when the the 5S phone came out, they probably designed it before the Apple 5 added the Touch ID. Yeah, cause because it, does, one it covers the, it up, doesn't it? Yes, because yeah. in order to make the overall size modest, that is the, in, the increase in size, they cover up that whole lower region with the keyboard. Yeah. Um, you know, I hail from loving my BlackBerry, Although now that I've switched over to the iOS and because BlackBerry's just pretty much, you know, <laughs> given up the ghost, um, I I really liked the BlackBerry keyboard. Um, they have, of course, Typo has has famously been sued by BlackBerry over how much the Typo people like the BlackBerry keyboard. As they say, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and the BlackBerry benefits from more width on its keyboard. So you've got a little more space on the BlackBerry, but uh, I picked it up and was able to start using it immediately. I love the fact that the, that the keyboard has a backlight when, when it's dark. Um, I mean, I, I'm sold. For myself, this is what I want. I do miss that I don't have Touch ID, but so that's part of the trade-off. Also, um, the it, it charges separately. It uses Bluetooth LE, um, in order to to talk to the phone. So you have to have Bluetooth on all the time. Um, I haven't ever exhausted the battery because I, what I do is when I plug the iPhone in, I plug the keyboard in at the same time, so they're both charging. Um, and just overall, I mean, I, it is, I think, a, a tremendous experience if you're somebody who misses the, you know, misses your BlackBerry and and sort of wants the best of both worlds. It reminds um, me of the BlackBerry because these are the same kind of domed 
keys that the black well, yeah, has. it's got that sort of that 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 funky kind of sculpture where yeah. the ones on the right are like or sweep to the right and the ones to the left sweep to the right to the right. left. I mean, it is absolutely the case that they stole the design from BlackBerry. <laughs> the, no, they did. The courts the courts will have to decide if that was a bad thing or not. If if there was actually anything that BlackBerry could protect. And I wouldn't mind if BlackBerry made a keyboard. As long as somebody does. I mean, I got a bunch of them because I didn't want to ever be without them. They're very much like my Well, and that's pilots. another uh, cause for concern. Uh, we talked to Renee Ritchie, uh, Andy Anako, both of whom received them at CES. But they were prototypes, we should say, and they've gone yeah. through quite a few. They've broken, I think, uh, I more broke eight of them. But yours has been, have you been using it pretty steadily since you got it last week? Yeah, I have. But this I had no problems. Good. Okay. You have yeah. to, you know, uh, there is another issue. I know you may never use this, but normally on iOS 7, you swipe up from the bottom to get, and you can't on with this thing on. Oh, I did, yes, but it I was with great yeah, difficty. I did. I've had, the, I've had the same problem. I'm glad yeah, you mentioned that because yeah. it's difficult to get down, started down as close as you need to. <laughs> there is a there is a keyboard button on the keyboard. A home button. Which well, no, there's a oh, home there's button, a but there's button. also a keyboard button. Yeah. You hold that down for four seconds in order to, to manually turn off the Bluetooth uh, to save the battery, if you okay. wish. Um, but if you if you press it normally, then it 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 requests the Apple keyboard to come up. That allows you to get to this to all the extra special characters and emojis and and international keyboard and other things that you may you may have on your uh, traditional keyboard. You know, I don't think I'm going back. I'm I'm really? liking. I am much faster and much more accurate on this than I was. You know, so sort of painfully typing characters on the on the Apple keyboard. So I think I'm a convert. I don't want to oversell it though, because I would say unless you you are giving up a lot of things, you can't use your own case. It is a case, right. so you lose any you know case that you might have been in love with, if you used like the one I was in love instance, with. Yeah, or a battery. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we usually do on before you buy pros and cons. Um, I'm going to give you one pro. It's backlit, so you can use it in the dark. That's kind of cool. That is nice. It's, of course, the 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 natural keyboard is backlit too. Yeah. Well, I guess so. It's always <laughs> on. It, the it also uh, it's a physical keyboard, and if you're a physical keyboard fan, this is to my knowledge the only way you can have one actually on the iPhone. Right. Um, it is a little larger. Uh, it takes over your case. Those two would be cons. Uh, you do have to charge it up separately, so you have yep. you have a battery uh, issue uh, with it. Uh, and we're not sure about reliability, but maybe these pro those are prototypes. Maybe these production devices are a little bit uh, yeah. more reliable. If they all die, I'll, switch, I'll I'll go back, but I'll probably use it until then. And you paid how much? Seventy bucks? Mm, no, I think it's a hundred dollars. It's ninety nine. Yeah, and $9. they're now saying that they're no, they're not able to provide them as quickly as they wanted due to the demand and backlog. I don't know what their production capabilities they say are. Sold out. New orders yeah. shipping mid March. Yeah. Uh, so it's typokeyboards.com, ninety nine dollars as you said, and so then the next only one thing remains, Steve. We always decide. We always announce. Is it a buy, a try, or a don't buy? Boy, I think it's so much a function of who you are. So we're going to say, I really do. Try, if, if, right? if, yeah, if you hate the, if you hate typing on a touch screen, this right. really does work. Steve Gibson, he's the host, the man in charge. We call him the explainer in chief of Security Now. Each and every Tuesday, eleven. I'm sorry, one p.m. Pacific, four p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's 2100 UTC on twit.tv. There you go. A big buy for uh, Steve Gibson. But I would say that Steve's only had it for a week. Mm -hmm. And a few people like Ryan, uh, like um, Renee Ritchie and uh, Andy Anako, who have, have, as I mentioned, have had it longer, say that they've had a lot of failures. Again, those might have been prototypes. So we'll watch with interest. But if you got to have a keyboard, that might be the solution for you. 99 bucks for the typo keyboard, a buy. From Steve Gibson. Steve Gibson, our, our host of Security Now. Well, this was a great show. I thank you, Steve, Ryan, I mean, uh, Radford. Who's Ryan? Oh, Seacrest. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest, we don't thank him. He yeah, wasn't he here. Is. This is the one show yeah. in the world he doesn't do. Uh, Tony Wang, Shannon Morse, Greg Burnett, thank you most importantly for joining us. We do Before You Buy uh, every Tuesday afternoon right after Security Now. You can watch live, but you can also get the individual reviews on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Before You Buy. Or get the full show at twit.tv slash BYB, audio and video available after the fact. We also uh, encourage you to subscribe. If you subscribe, you get it each week. It's in iTunes, you know, the Xbox Music Store, everywhere better podcasts are 
aggregated. If you have a suggestion for a product you'd like to see reviewed, we'd like to review it for you. Email us, byb at twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. We'll see you next time.